Hi, this is Bob from Radiant Memory Systems. You want to see something really cool? An RMS 350 ZNS drive on which we're running GZBD Viewer and RocksDB. And in RocksDB we're using ZenFS. The new RMS 350 ZNS SSD we'll be using today is compatible with the NVMe Zone Namespaces command set. And for our demonstrations, we'll be taking advantage of the 350's ability to be configured to a variety of zone sizes. Here I've chosen two zone sizes, a smaller one at 144 meg, which I'll refer to as narrow, and a much larger one at 9 gig, which I'll refer to as wide. To put the performance numbers we're about to show you in perspective, the 350 is capable of upwards of 3.4 gig per second sequential read throughput and 2.6 gig per second of sequential write throughput. However, for the purposes of this short demo, we'll only be scratching the surface of that performance capability. For the demo, we're going to use RocksDB, a popular key value store from Facebook. And we'll be running it via dbbench, a standard benchmarking tool that's also part of RocksDB. We'll be using a script inspired by the benchmark.sh script in RocksDB, which is a wrapper for dbbench, selecting a few benchmarks to run and using a configuration similar to the one in its bulk load configuration. Another part of the RocksDB variant that we'll be using is ZenFS. ZenFS is a recently proposed extension to RocksDB, providing a file system abstraction adapted for zone block devices by using libzbd a user space library. We've made some modifications here to libzbd to properly support ZNS while using a 5.4 kernel, but those changes may no longer be necessary in the new 5.9 kernel, which has just come out. And we modified RocksDB itself to create the ZenFS file system that it uses on the fly in order to simplify the demo flow. GZBD Viewer is the graphical tool that displays the zone state of the drive We've not modified it other than to link it with our libzbd library. Also, as mentioned earlier, we'll just be scratching the surface of what the 350 can do in these demos using a small subset of the drive ranging from 32 to 64 zones with the two different zone sizes just mentioned, 144 meg and 9 gig. And we'll be running all of this on a development workstation with eight cores and 16 gig of memory. So let's get started. But first, let's run RocksDB, standard RocksDB with no ZenFS. And so we look at the drives we have on this machine. We're going to look at the performance using Nmon in the upper right. We have top for processes in the lower right. And now we're going to run a benchmark derived from the bulk load benchmark just to give us the general idea. And we can see the actual performance at the drive not what RocksDB delivers to its workload, but what the drive is delivering. And as the benchmarks finish, we see the performance of each benchmark. So for these benchmarks, we're getting about 250 meg per second. And in these benchmarks, the write ahead log is enabled. So right after this, what we're going to do is disable the write ahead log and see what happens there. So we run the same benchmark except that the write ahead log is disabled. Now, if we look in the upper right, we see a slightly higher performance at the drive. And note, RocksDB's performance is even higher, implying it's delivering a lot of results just from memory. The cache is disabled in these benchmarks also.
So disabling the uh, right ahead log has a significant performance effect. Just gives us an idea of what we can deliver at the drive. Okay, so now we're going to use the 350 ZNS drive. And we're going to use a different version of RocksDB, which we call Rad Rocks, which is just ZenFS RFC with a few minor modifications to wire it up to hard drive. And we'll bring up GZBD Viewer from a previous run. We see that. And we're just going to look at what the zones zone report tells us. And we can look at the first 10 zones. We see we have, we're in what we call narrow mode, where 144 meg per zone. Now we're going to reset the drive. And run the same benchmark as before, but on the ZNS drive. So the, <clears throat> the narrow mode is not that interesting from a performance perspective, but for the sake of demos, it makes it easier to see what's going on at the zone level because if the, as the zones get bigger, it's harder to see the red area until you get very far into the test. So that's the main reason we're doing that here, just to give you an idea what the GZBD viewer shows you. We're going to jump ahead here just to get to the end of this test. We see the performance for that first benchmark was only 32 meg per second. And we're going to reset and move on to a different test. And now in this test, we're going to change the size of the zones to what we call wide zones. And now GZBD doesn't update on the zone size change. We have to restart it. We're using the same number of zones, only 48, a small subset of all the zones in the drive. And now if we look at the actual zone report, we see now we have, instead of 144 meg, we have nine gig per zone. And so now let's run the same test, first with right ahead log enabled. So now we look in the upper right corner, we can see our throughput has gone up significantly. Those light blue boxes around the zones are indicating that the zones are open, implicitly open zones. Of course, you can't see very much red because the zones are very big now. So you see a couple of thin red lines indicating data that's been written. And so we had 229 meg per second, 183 meg per second for the fill random. So not as good as when we just run RocksDB without the zoned drive. And now we're going to do what we did before and reset, whoops, wrong reset, reset the drive. And then we're going to run the test with the right head log disabled, which should incre increase the throughput. And so there in the upper right, you see the slightly higher throughput at the drive level, but the bigger difference will be what rocks to be itself reports. Now we're at six to 800 meg per second.
So here is an overview of the numbers we just collected as reported by DB Bench. And the numbers at the drive are always lower than this, about a factor of two. As you can see, there's not a whole lot of difference, maybe another factor of two between DB Bench, no write ahead log, and 350D with ZenFS. And I should add that we're doing informal tests here without a lot of data points, and there's significant variance from run to run, which I'm sort of glossing over. Bottom line is that as currently configured, the benchmark seems to be limited by CPU or lock contention. And I've made tweaks to threads, various sizes, and background activities. And the only things that make much of a difference in these short tests are the write-ahead log, which I'm going to disable from this point on. Increasing threads above one actually made things worse. So we've not yet succeeded in getting RocksDB with ZenFS to open up a wider frontier with the drive. And I just want to see with some quick and dirty changes if we can get it the drive to work up a sweat. Uh, because right now at about 500 meg per second at the drive, we're well below the drive performance limit. So let's explore that and see what else we can do just for fun. First, let's disable automated compactions and go up to 64 zones this time. And we'll notice the performance is slightly higher when we jump to the end than the 48 zone case, probably due to the compaction change. The performance we get is going to be a function of how many zones are actively involved. And the pattern we've seen thus far is of about six or seven zones at the end of, of the drive, or at least the end of the zones we've given RocksDB access to. So let's run on just 32 and see what happens. And so now we see 32 open zones. We see the, the same kind of a pattern emerging at the end of those 32. And also pay attention to the uh, CPU utilization in the top window and on the right side. And we'll see that DB Bench is basically 100% utilized. We're going to jump ahead and we're going to see that we get about the same performance as we got before on the 64 zone case. It's actually slightly higher, probably due to random variation. And so let's, this sort of begs the question of whether we can, this is another way to get RocksDB to use more of the zones. And so let's try to run two instances of RocksDB accessing separate zones. So each RocksDB now is independent. Theoretically, this should reduce the amount of contention that exists between those two RocksDBs. And we're gonna run one half on the first 32 zones, the other half, next 32 zones. And what we're going to see is the same pattern emerging at two different points in the 64 zone sequence. One in the middle, one at the end. CPU now is slightly less for DB Bench. And we jump ahead and we're going to see the final results, which are going to show us an overall performance, now we have to add the two numbers, two sets of numbers together, which is higher than before. So we're still using 64 zone, but when we have two instances of DB Bench, we get a higher throughput. Now this test took longer because the, we actually did twice as much work, so because I didn't reduce the work size in half. You may have noticed that the DB Bench was CPU constrained and we had a remote desktop running, so that was consuming a fair amount of CPU. So now we're going to run the same two tests, 32 zones each, but without the remote desktop, and we're going to see an even higher performance. We jump ahead now to see that result, one of the tests for the first 32 zones, and the other test for the next 32 zones, total is higher. So this table shows the summary of results from the last four tests where we've run 64 or 32 zones per DB bench instance. And we saw how we got more zones involved in the test by running multiple instances of DB bench and we were able to improve performance. And also by removing some things that were consuming CPU, we got up to about a gig as measured by DB Bench, 
if you look at what IOSTAT reports at the drive level, it's somewhat less. The peak bandwidth we got for, for that measurement was around 600 meg. And so we're well below the overall device capacity at this point. So I hope this was interesting and um, thank you very much for watching.